From here to the Iraqi Jordanian border is going to be five to six hours. How many more hours on the Iraqi side? Uh, about um, six, seven six. hours. Six weeks before America toppled Saddam Hussein, a consortium of women named Code Pink traveled to Baghdad. In a last-ditch effort to stop war, Code Pink attempted to give a human face to the people of Iraq. Amira Matsuda, an Iraqi-American, guided the delegation through the country. Oh, salam, yeah, just say ma salama, or you could say bye bye. Code Pink, led by Medea Benjamin of Global Exchange, a human rights organization based in San Francisco, staged numerous media events throughout the now war-torn city of Baghdad. The engine's gone. I also, since coming here, see what a huge city this is. It's a teeming population. Touring Baghdad, Code Pink visited many humanitarian organizations, including the Red Cross and the UN Food for Oil program. Distributing uh, in case of the crisis took place uh, to... Should have worn. They have already actually gave people, the whole population, all the supply they need until the month of May. And With Operation Iraqi Freedom looming, just weeks away, Code Pink discusses the role of world aid organizations. And the international community and the UN and all these agencies can get together and say, yes, we'll make sure that they have some extra food so that when war comes, we'll feel that we did something to protect the Iraqi people. We've been working, we've been working in the aid community for years. We know it really well. I worked for the UN, she worked for AID. It's, it's, it's not naive. The conversation becomes heated over whether world aid organizations should not only address the aftermath of war, but also do more to prevent it. Let's see them mobilize for demonstrations. Well, if they don't, they are the, quote, realists. They say, oh, the war's going to happen. Let's be there to take care of these people. I mean, the goal is to stop the war, but people are preparing in case there is a war. The bomb is about to fall in this damn city, bombs, and kill people. Are you going to think about how you're going to help them six months down the line? You got to say now, stop well, them. The ventilation system. So the second bomb, the Berna bomb, went entering the ventilation system. The El Amaria bomb shelter was struck in the first Gulf War, killing 400. At the time, under construction, it was made into an Iraqi national monument and was scheduled to open two weeks before the coming war. The women visited the site. The bombs. So the well, they, they, there were two bombs. The first one made an opening, made a big hall to enable the next one to burn the whole thing. Like all foreigners in Iraq, Code Pink was watched by minders. But with the assistance of Amira, the women mingled with Iraqis on the streets and in back alleys as they bargained and shopped in the open-air markets. As normal daily life went about its business, the smiles on the people's faces gave little sign of the impending war. Speaking with a coffee vendor, Medea is questioned. If she thought war was coming, wasn't she worried about her safety? Yes, but I'm leaving on Saturday. <laughs> While in Baghdad, Code Pink's spectacles drew a media swarm. However, you may not have seen their antics or heard their message back in the United States. And really, that's what we're trying to do to the people back in the United States is connect the dots and say, don't be distracted. <laughs> we are going to hear Colin Powell speak today at the United Nations. 
and we think he will talk about problems in the weapons inspections process. This is a long-term project that might need one year or two years, and we say the war against Iraq would unleash a wave of anti-American sentiment that would provoke more hatred against us. Our country is so damn powerful that they can make these people miserable, which they have done, and then they can drop the bombs, and then they can turn Feel on the spigots and let the food come in, let the medicines come in, and then all of a sudden, we're the liberators. We're the good ones. Used to be so across the board critical isn't helpful. So it doesn't accomplish anything. Aren't we doing the same thing when we're going in in a mini way and saying, here's the candy and here's the goodies and we're here for a minute and we're going to make you feel good for a minute because we're Americans and we can do that. Aren't we doing the same kind of thing? No. We're not. Okay. <laughs> Behind the Palestine Hotel, housing much of the foreign media, in the now symbolic Saddam circle, Code Pink marched around the statue, which weeks later would be pulled down by U.S. tanks. Saddam's image as an all-powerful military leader was the cornerstone of his rule. UN Chief Weapons Inspector Hans Blix commented that the Iraqi dictator could not afford a headline reading. Hussein regime has no chemical or biological weapons, an admission of impotence before the Iraqi people and the region in general. Code Pink has continued to protest the long war and has returned to Iraq multiple times. In their efforts to penetrate mainstream media, Code Pink believes millions of Americans still have not heard their message. People did stories about us in the New York Times and ABC, and every time they got to America, they were cut. In a tactic to work around what they call the news gatekeepers, Code Pink increasingly depends on the emerging broadcast capabilities of the internet to proliferate their message. 